Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Angela Ficken. She's a founder of Progress Wellness. Angela's a full-time psychotherapist in private practice. She specializes in OCD, eating disorders, and anxiety-related concerns. She started a career at McLean Hospital, which is one of the top-ranking psychiatric hospitals in the country and is affiliated with Harvard University. She is the head social worker on an inpatient unit that focuses on anxiety and depression. During her time at McLean, she trained in exposure therapy and became certified in CBT and DBT. Shortly thereafter, she worked at Harvard University as a primary therapist for undergraduate and graduate students. During her time there, she taught students CBT and DBT, which we're going to find out what those things are here shortly, skills to help them manage a range of challenging emotions that young adults face daily. Along with her work at McLean and Harvard, Angela had a small private practice for years before she decided to move full-time in 2013. From there, she focused her attention on working with young adults and entrepreneurs, primarily after noticing that both groups struggle with anxiety disorders and stress-related issues due to life transitions and the uncertainty of what was coming next in their lives. The struggle, as they say, is real. She spent years fine-tuning her practice and building her business into something more than standard full-time private practice. She began writing for Huffington Post as an expert, which then captured her into writing for other major online sources, such as Marriage.com, where she is a verified expert, YourTango.com, ThriveGlobal.com. She's been quoted on Oprah Magazine, FastCompany.com, Inc.com, Forbes.com, and many, many more. She has also been a guest on Onward Nation with Stephen Wessner, where she talked about OCD and intrusive thoughts, as well as in on the radio in Chicago and Reno, speaking about stress and anxiety. This is a great topic for us today in this world, and uh, with everything that's going on in our country and our economy, stress and depression are very high for all people. So I'm very excited to welcome Angela to the show. Thanks, Rich. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I really do look forward to this conversation. It is happening not just at the personal level. It's affecting businesses, families, uh, all sorts. So I think your services are much needed today more than ever. Uh, But with that said, we got a little bit of your background story, uh, but we'd like to hear the complete story of how you you came about getting in your business, uh, why you wanted to be an entrepreneur, maybe the ups and downs about the thought process behind that. But just tell us your story, if you would. Sure. So I guess my my story starts uh, as Angela as a 10 year old. Um, my parents had divorced years before that. Um, and I think at 10, my parents started dating and it was really hard for me. So that was when I first was in therapy. Um, both of my parents were very open to therapy and getting help. My therapist at the time, Dr. Thorbeck, was lovely and really helped me share and learn how to share what I was feeling and understand, but then also to just have someone in my life that could hold all the things um, and had my back and was not a parent. uh, And it was just a different relationship. And I just adored her. And I remember at 10 thinking, I want to do this when I grow up. Uh, And it just stuck. I think it was just happened to be a right fit for me. So that's kind of when I started learning or thinking about like, oh, I want to be a therapist when I grow up. I want to help people. Uh, And then as you kind of nicely read my bio, McLean Hospital, Harvard University, really kind of fine tuning my skill set and finding anxiety and stress disorders to be my jam of helping people who really struggle with those disorders. And uh, through my time at McLean and Harvard, I realized that I was kind of burning the candle at both ends, right? I was working full-time and then the small private practice. 
And I, it was just became too much. And I knew that I, I always wanted to do a full-time practice. And my husband said, just do it, just give it a try. So with the encouragement of a good support system, I did it. And I, and I thought that's where it would end for me, that I would hang up my shingle, call it a day. I reached the dream, right? 10 year old Angela has accomplished what she wanted. Um, but little did I know that's just kind of where it began, uh, the, the journey of being an entrepreneur. Uh, Boston is a very small city. It's not that big. Um, and I was hearing from people in my practice that the skills I was teaching them, the strategies that they had were life changing for them, that what once used to stress them out no longer did in the same way, but that I was a very hard find. Finding a therapist like me was hard. And I thought, huh, if I'm helpful, which is great. And the skills I can teach are helping people, but I'm a hard find. How do I make it easier for people? So that's when I started writing. Um, I created an online stress course, um, COVID coping kits. Like I started thinking of how do I get people the skills I teach, um, for no matter where you are, wherever you don't have to be in Boston. Uh, and you might not have time for therapy, a 45 minute session with me, but you're interested in skills. How do I get that to you? And so that's kind of where my entrepreneurial brain kicked in. Um, and haven't looked back since. You know, I, I would say a lot of people maybe discount the fact that being a therapist is in a, a business. I mean, I mean, it's really you have business components just like everybody else does, right? Marketing, advertising, bills to pay, rent to pay, et cetera. And how do you get customers? So one way to get customers is you became uh, more publicly aware through your writing, right? And you're you're being on t radio, et cetera. Yes. Yeah, that's been it, that's been very helpful. Um, and uh, the as all entrepreneurs, I'm sure can relate. It's just you have to get pretty creative with your hustle. Um, and there's always a hustle, right? You can never really relax. Yeah, yeah. Customers, you, some, you like them to find you and just be knocking on your door every day, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Right. Um, okay, let's talk about this from a two things. What is a CBT and a DBT? Because I, I don't know, know you were reading that. those. I'm like, oh, we didn't, I didn't really kind of spell <laughs> that out for you. So, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, are two therapy strategies that really help people learn how to think better, think more clearly. So instead of feeling anxious and stressed and making decisions based on those emotions, cognitive therapy helps you kind of reframe and look at the same situation from a different angle and more reality-based so that you can make a better decision for yourself. So that's cognitive uh, and it's research-based. I didn't make it up. <laughs> um, Aaron Beck, psychotherapist did it in the 60s it's it's well researched it's effective and then there's dialectical behavioral therapy dbt which is if you ever notice when you're feeling really anxious or angry or some really big feeling you might feel it in your body maybe your stomach goes to your throat or your heart drops to your feet or your body gets really tingly and dbt really helps with learning strategies on how to emotionally regulate your body. So if you can calm down your body, your brain starts to kick in and think more clearly, mm. which is the cognitive behavioral therapy, cognition, thinking. And if you can think more clearly, your body naturally calms down. So they, they're they like cousins <laughs> with each other. They work together. Um, but when you have those two skill sets you're golden, right? You can kind of get through really hard times, which is the only guarantee I can give people is like stuff will hit the fan periodically in our life. And if you've got the strategies to get through it more smoothly, um, it, it will build your resilience uh, and it can, it will just, you'll be benefit from it tremendously. So that's cognitive and dialectical, the CBT and DBT that you shared. Good. Thank you for that clarification. It makes sense to me. Um, I want to dive into your practice a little bit. I want to talk on the business side. I, I think everybody understands the therapy on the on the personal emotional side, but you're you're dealing with entrepreneurs, and they're at the end of the day, a corporation at the top of the corporation is a human being, 
Okay. But are they, maybe you could talk a little bit without giving any secret sauce or crossing any, you know, professional lines. What are entrepreneurs struggling with today? Is it, is it really business or is it business affecting their emotions or emotions affecting their business or a little bit of everything? It can be, it, it, it tends to be a mishmash, right? So the higher you climb, the more stress you get. Um, and it's a different type of stress and you don't really, you, it's a stress that many people, as you, you haven't felt it before, people who gravitate to self-employment um, inherently, I think are drawn to um, and thrive in a certain amount of stress and creativity. Um, but what I tend to see in entrepreneurs is, is either the, uh, you know, getting to the top and having to manage lots of personalities, right? So you, you have to manage people and you have pe your people are now managing other people. So it's a lot to navigate. And then also your personal life. How do you turn off work and start dating or reconnect with your partner or have a family or whatever it is that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. How do you include that part when you've worked so hard to get here? How do you um, kind of broaden your horizons to think about other things that you want to include? And then sometimes with higher stress, other things start to come out. So people will come in um, with uh, OCD symptoms, obsessive compulsive disorder, or higher anxiety disorders that they haven't really experienced before or that were really more dormant because they could kind of cope through it. Mm -hmm. But with this added layer of stress, they just don't have the resources to manage um, some behaviors like, like like they used to. I remember when I was in corporate America, one of my friends who became the CEO of the company actually hit that anxiety wall. He goes, you know what? It was always good to be one step below because you had, you didn't have all that responsibility. But when I when he said, I got the CEO job, I've never been one before, but now I have all the responsibility. And he hit this wall, you know, of things that he wasn't aware of, things that, like you said, were uncovered later and maybe just in changing positions. You know, I have personally found that, you know, I have a therapist and, and part of my business team. I think it's just really good to check in at least on a once a month basis to get out of my head. Uh, and some of it's business, some of it's emotional. But I, you know, I think it was good. It was a wise decision. And I, and I recommend to business owners to have a therapist on their team because it's, it's, it is lonely at the top and we get stuck inside our heads and a good therapist like yourself help us get out of that. Um, talk about telemedicine. That's changed. You were in Boston. Boston's a small city. Are you doing work all over the country, all over the world? Um, I, uh, Primarily for private practice, I'm in the state of Massachusetts, so that's where my my practice is, and I am 100% virtual. So I it, and it's been, um, I think that's kind of where I'm going to be for the the foreseeable future. I don't necessarily need an office, but for people that want to see me in the psychotherapy realm, it's for licensing purposes. It's in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and for skills coaching, for people that are um, around the, the country that are interested in, in coaching, I can do that. Um, and that's usually where people will come in for three to five sessions, really looking for specific skills to manage a certain problem um, that they're wanting help with, and that I can do. Okay. So this is the next part is the commercial break. As we mentioned before the show, um, I guess the world's your oyster as far as everybody needs help. But uh, nonetheless, commercial break. Who is your customer? What are you looking for? Who, who do you help best? Uh, so uh, what would you like to promote about yourself, your business? I think, you know, my people, when I think about my people, um, they are uh, really struggling with stress and anxiety and usually in high power, high stress jobs, right? They're, they're very good at uh, multitasking and running the show. And now they're hitting up against a wall that they haven't really hit before and are not used to that and need some guidance. And that's really when I come in and my, my goal is to make that learning fun and easy, accessible, and that you can start to see progress fairly quickly, right? To get you up and running as quickly as possible. Um, 
So my, as I said earlier, you know, my, my job shift is not just in the private practice realm, but how do I give you the skills that I teach in my sessions? If you don't have time for therapy, if you're not in Massachusetts, or you're just wanting to get an idea of what's out there and there are skills and strategies, you don't have to move mountains to actually feel better. Um, Mm -hmm. If you do some work in six Mondays, right? Six weeks, you can actually Mm -hmm. start to see a real shift. So a lot of where I spend my time on my entrepreneurial side is writing and creating uh, products so that you can learn what I teach in session without having to Mm -hmm. see me. Um, So when COVID hit, I created a COVID coping kit. I have an everyday um, coping kit. These are fun strategies that have the cognitive and dialectical aspects to it. So you kind of get both. I have a CBT workbook that I wrote and all of this is kind of on Amazon. And that's really uh, where I think people can get a nice taste of what what are these strategies? What are these skills and how are they helpful? Uh, And that if people want more, they know where they can uh, find me. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, where I've spent most of my time. Um, help us differentiate uh, when a decision would be made to hire a coach or have a therapist. So I think coach is when you're looking for a specific goal that you want to target and is focused on skill building. So if you're going through a period of stress that's related to work, for example, and you have an idea of what the issue is, but you're not quite sure how to dig out of it, I can come in and coach you through specific strategies to help you think about it better and uh, do better. Psychotherapy is more of, it can be part of that, but then also, where do you think that comes from? What's your history? How do you think you got here in the first place? Why do you think you think the way that you do? Uh, And it's really looking at your history and putting the pieces together so that you can understand why you do the things you do. And then what do you want to do differently? And that could be in your personal life. Who are you in your relationships? How do you get triggered? Um, And maybe things that keep happening at work that you're, you're like, why am I seeing this happen with me and my coworker again and again, or me and the, my CPO, like we keep getting at it or certain people like this really trigger me. Why is that? That's more of kind of the process psychotherapy of, you know, more longer term one-on-one care. Sure. Okay. So this is going to carry me into the second part. Cause I think it's a nice blend. You know, we hit we had the pandemic and obviously that created a whole world of different emotions for everybody. Nobody escaped that. I'm sure you had addressed that a little bit in this talk so far, uh, but we but we also have a tough economy, you know, all the headwinds of we can ever think of in one year in 2022. Still got them carrying on to 2023 to lead a company to run a company. Uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. One is how did it affect your practice? Uh, if you are you seeing an increase of people just kind of really being uncertain how to deal with the future. That's one question about how it affects your business, but also how did you navigate your business? Because you had to adapt and to, I'll go all back to 2020. And then again, getting out of getting out of the pandemic, heading into all these economic uncertainties. Uh, that'd be your second question. And third, I'm going to stack them up here on you. Okay. Is how do you take care of yourself personally to stay, stay the course? I'll try to remember all three. Um, and if I can, I know you okay. will. Probably. I'll help you. Um, so it, when 2020 hit, I think for me and my practice, I think some of my my uh, other psychotherapy colleague friends can agree that it was really seamless to go from in the office to virtual because we can we can do camera, uh, and it was it was seamless and busy. Um, I think when people realized I can be home and still have therapy, it made it much easier to do therapy because you didn't have the travel time. 
you didn't have to sneak out of the office at 12 and somehow show up at 1.30 and be like, oh, it was a doctor's appointment or I've now I've got a dentist appointment or now, you know, so it was the, the hecticness of like, where is Angela's office? Okay, how do I get there and back in the amount of time? But it can't be lunch because, you know, I've got lunch meetings or Angela's lunch times were all filled. So it's got to be 10 o'clock. It's all this navigating that when the pandemic happened, you could just flip up your laptop, have a session, close it, and then you're immediately back to work. So I think that made it easier for people. And so far, many of my clients prefer it. Um, and it hasn't, I haven't felt personally that it's interrupted building a relationship. Sometimes I feel like I, I haven't met most of my people face to face now. Uh, and it feels like I do know them. It feels like we have met. Uh, sometimes I laugh. I'm like, wait, how tall are you? <laughs> and we can try to, <laughs> like, I can't I try to get a better picture. Um, but it's been that part has been seamless and my practice has grown because of, I think it's become more accessible and easier for people to sign on and off without having that travel time. Okay. So you, so that you, so you didn't, you saw some, and I think agree, more flexibility, more accessibility. Okay. Um, you adapted, you, you said you adapted by writing and by adjusting, creating some things for certain events in life. Is that other things that you did that you had to adapt? Yeah, so I think what I what I was trying to think about on top of my practice just naturally building because people had more time was what can I give people now knowing that they're more stressed out, right? So that's the other part uh and that if my practice did shift, you know, uh numbers, you know, dwindled for the month or um at that part is and we can all agree being entrepreneurs, it's unpredictable um, that I would be able to still create some products that might generate added income, but that are also helpful for the now. Um, so that's kind of how I adjusted. Um, and I did that pretty quickly. Um, but that also is just like, I follow other brands and other entrepreneurs too, and seeing how they were adapting. So even though they do something completely different than I do, I think when you watch other businesses that you're interested in, you, that helps also with your creativity. Is it possible to scale a therapist's business? I mean, you, you only have so many hours a day and so many slots you could fill. I mean, can you do you add colleagues to your mix and you become a more uh, group therapy uh, business? You can. I certainly have friends that do that and are very successful doing that. I find that um, that doesn't necessarily call to me because that means more responsibility of other people. Um, and that is a stress that doesn't excite me. It just makes me more even more stressed out thinking. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not for me. I like being my own ship. And then the creativity of um products and writing that I can put out there. That part I find really fun. Yeah, great. Great. I don't know if this is, a, I'll ask the question. Maybe there's a good answer. Maybe it's not. On the business sector again, um, what keeps most people up at night lately? Have you, are you finding a trend? I mean, is there a pattern? Everybody's like, God, I can't find labor and it's driving me crazy or I hate my boss or is there some, some, as our listeners are listening, they go, oh yeah, I got that too. Um, in the business world, what's keeping people up at night? Um, well, it, it definitely varies. It depends on kind of what stage you're in. So I guess that what I'm, what I'm seeing and the flavors of it are, um, navigating, climbing up the kind of C-suite steps and navigating that new tier of stress and personalities of coworkers that go with it. Um, the financial pressure of maintaining. So once you're there, uh, how do you maintain it? Uh, and um, then kind of navigate that, that own stress in itself. Um, and then there are some people that are having a hard time, not necessarily finding work, but finding the right fit. Um, either finding the right fit job or the right fit 
employee and the 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 amount of round interviewing rounds that some people have to go through is uh just something I've I is brand new to me and hearing like you know 10 15 rounds of an interview and of course this tends to happen as you're getting closer to the the kind of CPO C suite kind mm-hmm. of CEO area um months of stress to potentially not get the job, right? And that is kind of what's keeping people up of like how many rounds of this do they need so that they can see that I can do this job. Um, And because there's, um, it's a big job and a a handful or more of people are going for this job, sometimes it just doesn't work out. So you go through 15 rounds, three months of hoping for something and it doesn't pan out. And that can keep, you know, that definitely is a stress and keeps people up. So those are some of the flavors I've been seeing. Yeah. And good, good owners of companies, you know, when you're that owner, you go to bed at night and you think about not just business, but you also think about all the people that work for you and their lives and their families. And it's a pretty big burden sometimes. So I think people just, don't realize that and especially with the economy that's you know kind of wreaking havoc on a lot of people's and companies uh they're carrying a lot of that stress along okay i've always wondered so all day long you're listening to my problem (laughs) but you have to go home you got a family right you got you you know you got a husband and you got to get up in the next morning you got how do you stay focused and disciplined and how do you keep yourself in, in in the game as we say Sure. So I, it's a, it's always a work in progress, right? Um, that's at least how I see it. Nothing set in stone. So I, I have to tend to my own self-care. It, it ebbs and flows um, depending on, I guess, the season. Uh, I have a very supportive husband. He uh, is a wonderful listener. And um, I think just being able to share my worries and concerns with him uh, we have a morning check-in every morning before we get our daughter up. So I've got my coffee, he's got his breakfast and we talk about the day or we talk about what's on our mind. So that has been a very, uh, helpful support and way to start my day. Um, I, uh, make sure to move my body every day. So whether it's by walking or doing some running or something, but I try to do that. Uh, and, for my practice side and the business side of things, I have a mentor, uh, somebody that's been in my life for almost 15 years. And I talk to her about cases. So I know that she's a support, um, attending conferences. I read books mostly on parenting these days. I have a four-year-old daughter. So trying to be the best parent I can be, but I think just trying to take some space for myself. And that's usually once my daughter goes to bed at seven 30, that's when I kind of get in the whether I'm on the treadmill or I'm, you know, listening to a podcast, I'm reading a book, um, I'm doing a good old fashioned social media scroll, but that that's kind of my conveyor belt of how do I kind of take care of myself through, through this on the back end, so that I can show up for everybody and uh, have a full working brain. Yeah. Cause you gotta be present in, in the moment, in, in the moment. And so I can appreciate you finding a way to debrief yourself. I like the morning check-in. That was an interesting idea. So you just talk about whatever's going on today, just seeing how things are going with your spouse. Yeah, uh, that was my husband's wonderful idea. He's he's got all the wonderful ideas, um, and yeah, we even talk about stuff that annoys us about each other. Right? It's just okay. it's a place to kind of put it all and be heard. And, uh, you know, we, we hug it out and then we're, you know, we're on for the day and, uh, it's, it's a really, you know, nice place to, to start, uh, before we're, we're in it. Yeah. I love the idea. I hope our listeners can take that and use that in their, in their relationships as well. <laughs> Angela, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day and, uh, and getting a chance for us to hear your wisdom. And, and again, I really do support what you're doing. I think more than ever, you know, relationships, people are isolating way too much. They're stuck in their head way too much. There used to be a, you know, my parents grew up therapy used to be a big negative connotation. Now I think it's a wise move. I think it's, I think it's, it's got to change that 
a stereotype. I think it's good to have somebody in the therapeutic side in your life, especially if you are a business owner or a senior executive. So how can people get a hold of you should they want to utilize your services? Absolutely. Thank you, Rich. So to get a hold of me, uh, I try to make myself an easy find, right? So uh, progresswellness.com is my website. And then on there, you can learn all about me, my practice, my style, and you can find my email, phone number, all that if you'd like to reach out. Very good. And we will put all that information on the show notes, which will be aired somewhere between two to three weeks on all podcast platforms, as well as this video will be on our YouTube channel. Angela, again, thank you on behalf of our listeners, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, Rich. Rich LeBron here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.